Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm an engineer at Opaque Multimedia. I've been part of the team that's built Connect for Unreal. Our plugin allows you to use the Connect 2 for Windows features in Unreal Engine 4 games. I'm going to go through and show you uh, how it works, and also discuss some example mini games we've made that use the features of the plugin. The machine we'll be using uh, runs Windows 8. It's a mid range gaming machine. It's got an i5 with the GTX 660, 8GB of RAM, and it's running Unreal Engine 4.3. So our plugin works like any others. You just drop it in the plugins folder. Once you've enabled it, you're good to go. We use a custom player controller class. So if I say player controller. So I'll get the player controller here, and we cast it out to our player controller, which is called connect player controller, funnily enough. So from here, we can access all of the good stuff. For example, I can say get joint position, just type it in here, joint position, absolute position, and that, just like that I've got access to the player number and the joint type that I want, I've got a vector which represents the point in space where the first player's spine is, and that's as easy as that. We also have a number of different things available, I'll just type in connect so I can show you everything that we have to offer, um, almost everything. So we have the hand states, both um, running to a switch statement and the states represented as enums. We have distance between joints, um, the absolute delta position and relative position from the spine base or um, other joints, and we have the orientations available. So essentially everything that Connect 2 offers uh, on the Windows platform. So here we have the scene for our tightrope demo in which we have our lovely button which we'll be able to push, and once that happens we'll activate this, the tie rope setup. So players walk across this little line towards the indicator, and if they reach the end, they've won! If not, well, they plummet to their doom, but what are you going to do? So this is the keyboard demo of the interactivity in here, and we've disabled the random roll for a sec, so you can just see the players get moved along, and I can move left and right. If I move over too far, I fall down. So when the player hits that button, this is the pawn that's spawned, and it's relatively straightforward. We've got the setup section, and crucially we get the reference to the connect player controller here, that'll be very useful later on, and we create a random roll here. So that's to try and uh, trick the player up and hurl them off as they're walking across the tightrope. We set up the movement, slowly moving forward, um, we combine the inputs including the connect input to work out how far they should be rolling, and we see if they've rolled too far and they're going to be hurled off. So to take a closer look at what's happening under the hood, we can have a look in here and investigate the blueprints which control our Connect input. So this is everything to do with Connect that's really feeding our simulation here. First up we look at the dominant player. Essentially, if there's a crowd of people, who's most likely to be player one or the dominant player, if we will? Um, we find it through our plugin and we set it as a variable. So that's an enum. Um, we can use it like any of the variables and we um, use it, for example, when we're finding uh, any positions, when we're getting joints, getting information about hand states. We just feed that in later here. So through our reference to the connect player controller, we get the left and the right hand positions. We break that into two vectors. We get the Z components of each, so we're comparing the heights. And um, we've got a little bit of maths here. We multiply that with multiplying factor, and the result is the amount of roll that we have. And it's as simple as that. So to demonstrate the game, we've got Liam here, who is going to be doing our connect input. So if I just roll up and press this button from here, we can see that as he moves his hands up and down, he can control his rotation. Pretty easy. And if he tips too far, off he goes. Okay, so now Liam has to deal with a random roll. Let's see how he takes the challenge. So as you can see, it's swaying a little bit, and he's got to use his arms, flap up and down, and he can correct that. It's actually a bit brutal, so let's see if he can make it to the very end. So as you can see, it's a reasonably easy game, it's very quick, something fun you can generate pretty quickly. So it's pretty easy to generate simple games um, using blueprints alone with our plugin. So in this room we have three meshes, and each mesh has a dynamic texture, which is updated with a different stream available from the Connect. So we have the RGB stream, the infrared stream, and the death stream. So this 
where the magic happens. We have quite a bit up here, which is to do with some very cool depth texture stuff, which we'll be showing you shortly. But the really important stuff is down here. So, as you can see, as we begin, we do our usual cast and grab the Connect Player controller. Once we've got that reference, we can get the dynamic texture for each the color, the infrared, and the depth streams. And we can go through and set the materials for all the respective windows to the uh, texture that we get out. And lastly, we set a, a flag on our controller to um, have each one of these textures update in real time. So here we have a demonstration of the three feeds again. We've got this lovely 2048 RGB texture in the middle, and Liam is wandering around our lovely new office. Now note that that's just a dynamic texture, and you can do anything you like uh, that you could to a regular texture in the scene, including, because it's uh, quite a large one, we can um, zoom in, we can go for a wander around, we can look at our air conditioner, we can zoom back out again. We can also pause any of these by hitting this lovely button, and resume again, and we've started once more. So if we wander over here, we have the IR feed. It's a little bit dim, but you can see the. Um, you can see as Liam gets closer, it grows brighter and brighter. Again, it's an ordinary, te ordinary texture, so any post processing that you want to do, you can just, for example, oh, simple overlay, and we're into tactical night vision. And off again. And over to the right, we have the depth stream. Now that as you approach uh, the connect until you get to about half a meter in front of it you grow darker and darker until you drop out completely and as you go back again you grow brighter and brighter and one thing that that allows us to do is banding so if Liam steps forward as we detect his skeleton we then check in front and behind of him we see exactly what should be cut out of the scene as you can see he's reaching outside of the bounds there and we can adjust this on the fly um, to ensure we see him and only him. So with just a few bits of information, it's possible to make a number of different types of games with the plugin. For example, we've got dodgeball here. So we're just using the body position here, using the relative position to the spine of various different points, uh, in this case the shoulder mostly, and that's about it. So Liam's just going to demonstrate the game for us now. If I just walk over and hit this button, we'll start the game of dodgeball. So you can see that uh, we've rigged up a couple of conditions that you can meet by moving your body. It's not a one-to-one -one mapping of uh, moving left one centimeter moves you left one centimeter. In this case, we've just um, triggered various conditions using the body. So you can see that Liam can move slightly and just trigger a threshold on and off. As soon as he's moved over, he's triggered that Boolean condition and the avatar moves out of the way of the impending flying doom. It's a good abstraction that you can use in many different ways. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening.